as we know there is no more e3 e3 is officially dead unless somewhere down the line which i really hope they don't at this point i think we should just kind of just let it be like i don't want any more attempts at a comeback for e3 but as we know what e3 is no more so like we said before jeff Keeley, uh it's really his his thing now like outside of the other companies that want to do things which you know pretty much seems like the norm now uh ubisoft doing their thing you know it might sit on for microsoft might sit on for sony um and then other companies who want to jump in and have their showcase next month june but uh summer's game fest looks like it's even bigger looks like it is even bigger this year which i mean again as is expected as e3 is no more but here is the list of partners and this has round one so that's actually exciting i wonder what's round two maybe round three i don't know but uh here's a full list of partners that are slated to have some sort of announcements games to play demos to play um because I, i'm assuming that uh jeff Keeley is going to have another physical space which probably has to be bigger than the one he did the first year um he's gonna have a physical space especially with the uh amount of companies that possibly have something to show so this is good um then we have a, a a really big you know just from this round one lineup including 2k games um it looks like amazon is gonna be there and apura uh art games atari atari i wonder what atari been. i know atari been working on their console and but I don't think like anybody has heard of it or has it like i don't even know what atari has been doing but i mean shout out to him for trying i guess uh bandai namco blumhouse game that's interesting that's uh i mean because that's typically like you know horror stuff so i wonder what they can show uh Boca game studios capcom i know they were showing street fighter 6 um when they went to some of the deep silver devolver discord Discord, uh ea uh epic game focus uh hoyo verse what else we got that's uh meta when the man's gonna show netties uh which netties i'm sure there's probably gonna be more uh marvel rivals unless they have something else netflix games the one they're gonna show nexon uh, an antic party party animals is just is, is the studio just called party animal uh play on playstation pocket pair private division razor riot samsung gaming hub sega snk steam I wonder what something you know, something. Or something like a bunch of companies here that I'm not actually familiar with. Ubisoft, which was uh, just talking about the uncapped games, Warner Brothers, and Xbox. So, uh, so I'm excited to see uh, what else, what other studios are going to uh, pop up. But uh, uh, expect some of Game Fest to have a good number of premieres, world premieres, uh, first looks. So it's cool. Maybe one year, maybe one year. I know definitely what happened this year. Maybe one year I'll be able to go. Maybe. The more the fellas can go you know we can try to relive the feeling of e3 so rp rp e3 but uh going to some of the game fest would be cool uh going to some of the game fest would be cool so we'll see we shall see uh other news you know another quick hit uh during the news <laughs> the discourse last uh last night where i should say yesterday not last night but yesterday um uh, ubisoft has canceled the division heartland and I saw some people were upset. I know that there aren't some Division fans. But honestly, for Ubisoft, especially um, since they are dealing with this restructure and are dealing with layoffs, I think that canceling the Division Heartland was a good decision. Um, I think that they need to have a smaller focus on some of their hard-hitting titles. Unfortunately, it's going to be more Assassin's Creed. <laughs> but, you know, because that's their excuse me that's their breadwinner and also star wars under the star wars is going to be a major thing this year for them so i think that they just need to focus on those two titles to be honest um i don't think that with even though the division one was was decent and the division two was okay um as far as financial expectations and longevity both of those games did not meet expectations so Again, it doesn't matter how much you may have liked the game personally, the bottom line, the common denominator, oh, it's going to be the financial aspect. So maybe they feel like too many resources, 
that were uh being deployed for making another division game and honestly i don't think that it would do any better especially with this being you know technically the third iteration so um this is good news i know that it sucks to hear about games and and you know being canceled and people getting fired laid off you know it's never good so um i'm hoping that the people who were working on the division heartland did not get fired or laid off and instead uh hopefully they got sent to other divisions working on other games um if they could fire it, you know obviously that's that's very unfortunate um you know and i hope that they land back on their feet but again this was a good thing just for the game itself because i don't think that especially in this climate i don't think that it was going to sell well uh ubisoft has had a lot of misses especially in the last few years they've had a lot of misses and i think that uh, this was a good decision for them to uh to cancel the so, hey, there you go uh next bit of news this is going back to assassin's creed more ubisoft news so um you know the the main discourse yesterday and it's still continuing today was obviously yasuke uh being one of the main protagonists of the next assassin's creed that will be coming out in november people literally cannot stop talking about it i do not understand why but we're here it is what it is you know and, and again poor poor now way because nobody even talks about her they're acting like literally like you only play as yasuke and that's it it's so it's so weird like damn now it's right there bro she's right there she's on the cover like <laughs> like let's not forget her but anyway so another thing that that kind of went over a lot of people's heads because they were so busy talking about black man black man um assassin's creed um outside of because we don't talk about the bundles to me and we kind of touched on it yesterday when i did that last video but uh, people were talking about how much these deluxe editions were going to cost for this game but another thing that people saw was that uh, apparently assassin's creed shadows required you to be always online now drm and i talked about this yesterday drm is kind of a standard like i said it, it's it's been like one of those things that's just been in the background and um and a lot of games do require you to be always online but the reason why people were the people that called it were upset with this because it's a single player game like usually drm isn't in single player games especially like this so uh initially they did say that assassin's creed shadows even if you got a physical copy would require you to be always online so um i don't think it's as green to address the yasuke thing i don't think they will i don't think they actually need to but they did address this one so they did tweet literally today they said hey everyone we want to share some early information on the upcoming launch of assassin's creed shadows that following some questions we've noticed in the community that's Creed shadows will not require a mandatory connection at all times they do say an online connection will be needed to install the game which is still kind of weird i'm not going to lie especially if you have a physical copy i mean obviously if you have a digital copy you clearly need to be online in order to install it like duh but a physical copy and, and i keep telling people like physical copies nowadays aren't even like physical copies like yes you'll have it there and but you still need to install it on your console of choice in order to play the game so like it's weird like physical copy you can't just put in the disc and then it's just playable you still have to install the game itself you still have to install updates patches whatnot day one so you still i mean even though you physically own it you still need and the online aspect you still need to install it on your console so they said that an online connection will be needed to install the game, but you will have uh you will be able to play the entire journey offline. So again, just to clarify, you need to be connected online in order to install the game if you have a physical copy. But after that, you're good and you can actually play it offline. They said they're super excited to bring us out of the creed to feudal Japan on November 15th when a game releases. I cannot wait to show you more along the way uh so dark uh you assume that the lux bundles are hell expensive yeah they're like 150 they're like 150 actually we can uh should have put that up too a shout out to you for the chat um i said they already have good oh actually it's not enough so this one Oh yeah, this other one, which is weird. They Ubisoft being Ubisoft, they let they actually let you uh you have Ubisoft 
premium if you have ubisoft plus premium you can pay 17.99 a month for the ultimate edition <laughs> but it's 129.99 but this one but here's everything here uh, sorry it wasn't 150 that was that was another game that i saw that was 150 so sorry about that um you know when to make sure i get my facts correct but standard edition 69.99 uh gold edition you get the base game pre-order bonus season pass and you get to play three days early that's 109.99 and then the ultimate edition you get the base game pre-order bonus season pass three days early access and the ultimate pack for 129.90 or if you have ubisoft plus you just pay 17.99 a month and you can get all of this um including the entire ubisoft plus library that they have there. so whatever but uh so there you go so that's uh that's that's that so that's how much it costs and people were up in arms and again i'm just going to keep it run simple here don't buy it don't buy it you know because uh just like the hell diver 2 situation which we've spoken about if you don't buy it, then maybe just maybe Ubisoft and other companies will be like, hey, like they're not they're not going to pay this much. And, you know, maybe we're not giving enough, uh, you know, to be worth the price to justify the price of one twenty nine ninety nine for our ultimate edition. Maybe we should scale it back and not do, you know, three tiers of whatever game is coming out like just don't buy it because once one person buy it once a whale buys it then that's going to give ubisoft or any other company the justification like oh well somebody bought it so somebody must think that you know whatever that we're giving them in, in this ultimate edition is worth it just don't buy it and like if you want to play the game buy the standard edition or if for some reason you are a sucker that <laughs> that that actually subscribes to ubisoft plus then you know you're paying your 17.99 a month to play this game and other games in the ubisoft library so then you you get the ultimate edition and so like i said just don't buy it like i said it it it, it makes little to no sense to scream at the top of your lungs about what ubisoft or any other company is doing how much they're charging for these ultimate editions or deluxe editions whatever just don't buy the game but like I said, that's going to be that's going to hit their bottom line. They're going to be like, hey, nobody's buying it. Like, why are we even making these tiers if nobody's going to buy whatever the highest edition? I'm sorry. That's that that should honestly just be common sense at this point. Just don't buy it. Trust me, they will understand or they'll just keep doing it and you ignore it. Like, and I, I, I don't understand what's the point of ignoring it. I've never bought a deluxe edition of anything like unless like it was years down the line and, you know, it was discounted. But I've never, I like it's rare. Like I, I like like I said, I literally cannot think of a time that I outright just bought a deluxe edition or any game that's over seventy dollars. Like that just that's not worth it to me. And usually, you know, I have the privilege of getting these games for free. So you know, that's another thing. You know, over the years, I have had the the privilege and the luxury of getting these games for free. But you know, for the games that I buy outright, I don't I don't buy this stuff. I don't feel like it's worth it. Like I don't care to play this game three days early. I, I honestly don't I don't think that that's that's a perk like I can wait three days like I'm not I'm not I'm not hurting for you know to make content or to play the game so so that doesn't entice me whatever this pre-order bonus is it says you're going to get in with the standard edition anyways and the season pass like I don't know what they're going to have in the season pass but I generally don't care about that stuff either especially with single player games why like, why do you have a season pass for a single player game I ignore that too to be honest like I don't care what DLC you coming out with I usually don't care about DLC I usually don't go back to a game once I beat it so again for me personally I don't care about it you know if this is one of the only games that you're going to play for the year though it's coming out at the end of the year okay you know maybe you could justify it if, if you really really love Assassin's Creed but again when you're doing that then you are unfortunately justifying that hey this is okay so again like if you want to see change then just ignore it and if you want to play the game just buy the standard edition or again if you're subscribed to ubisoft plus then just play that sorry it's it's it really should not be more complicated than it is or i mean boycott them i don't know <laughs> like just boycott them but like i said i don't think boycotting them is really going to work unless you double down boycott them and don't buy anything and a bunch of y'all don't buy it you know like don't buy the game at all like that'll be even crazy and they're gonna be like okay they'll shape up even quicker if you don't do it so uh we mad about tonight hey uh i mean the more sad to read <laughs> unfortunately michael transactions yeah the lux additional discount uh three days early trash yeah like so i'm not really uh interested does we saw plus even got anything worth playing uh not to me not really not really like i said I, and they're you know and they've been taking stuff off of their library too so you know you can't forget that at any any point in time you know you could download a game 
from their catalog and you know whenever they decide to cut uh turn the servers off then they'll just take the game from you. so i say you know you gotta be wary of that as well so anyway there you go at least they have clarified that you know that's good uh for the people to still buy physical copies that you at least only need to be online when you are downloading the game but after that you are good all right next bit of news grand theft auto 6 everybody's waiting on grand theft auto 6 that is coming in fall of 2025 there's no other news right now other than other than the potential of next month either through jeff keenley's platforms uh summer games fest or on their own because you know rockstar generally never like it's been a very long time that anything related to anything in rockstar's catalog gets revealed on someone else's platform i mean the last thing that we saw was red dead redemption 2 like it's been a long time and rockstar again showcased that themselves and i know that the grand theft auto 6 trailer leaked and then you know they had to release it early so you know that was that but outside of that usually rockstar just decides to like they don't even hold like a conference they just say hey like <laughs> like we're about to release you know more information in the trailer gameplay trailer whatever you know on this date and then that's that so we'll see if things change maybe jeff keenley does have the magic touch you know he is announcing this on his twitter so maybe and 2k games it's supposed to be at some of the game fest so maybe they have partnered with him and maybe they do have something to show on his platform but again if they don't you know there is a rumor that they are supposed to show something next month so i would assume you know i mean we have another year so i don't think they're going to show any gameplay i don't think they're going to show any gameplay. the most i would think if you're going to show something next month it has to be like a second gameplay trailer that's what i would think i think it's still too early to show actual game that's one other thing i think it will be a cinematic i say gameplay trailer excuse me i mean cinematic trailer i think it will still be too early for gameplay trailer so we'll see we'll see but that is a rumor so if we do see something next month from rockstar games then you know we'll see if it's going to be on some game fest or if it's going to be rockstar just showing it themselves because they're still fighting millennia sad sad <laughs> All right, um, next bit of news, Valve. You know, Valve has been pretty quiet outside of the Steam Deck on creating games on their platform, but apparently there are new details on a new Valve game called Deadlock. And this leak, this isn't official, but uh, it said new details have emerged about Valve's new game, and it will be officially called Deadlock. That during this development, the game had been known as Neon Prime and Citadel. I actually do remember Citadel. I remember that name, but again, we knew nothing about it and we did not see anything. So, uh, so according to Gabe, um, there is a lot of new information about the game. So, Deadline will reportedly be a 6v6 third person hero shooter. Hmm, what's that remind me? <laughs> what's that remind me of? Marvel Rivals, we're going to play it a little bit. <laughs> we're actually going to play it a little bit. So we'll see. 6v6 third person hero shooter that this game will feature large map, a large map with four lanes to attack that have tower defense mechanics as well as various items and abilities to utilize. So it's like, it, it sounds like as we read more, it sounds like Overwatch meets, meets like Smite or, uh, or Paragon predecessor. So it sounds like that because it has tower defense mechanics. Uh, so I had to see. Uh, then it, a gay follower asked that Deadlock will have a fantasy setting mixed with steampunk. Magicians, weird creatures, and robots. Last year they say the game will feature fast travel using floating rails similar to Bioshock Infinite. So this information has yet to be confirmed. So again, technically, this is still a rumor. So take that with a grain of salt. Still ain't rumor. Nothing has been confirmed by Valve. Um, you know, Insider Gaming, they they typically talk about a lot of rumors. So again, uh, to take that with a uh, a grain of salt here. So we shall see. We shall see. But uh, you know, it will be interesting if Valve does have something else cooking in their uh, stable. Last bit of news: Activision announces a new AAA studio. Now this has been confirmed. This has been confirmed. I saw Jeff Keenley talk about it and other um other reputable outlets also report on this 
So this is official. The Activision has announced it's opening a brand new AAA studio based in Poland called Elsewhere Entertainment. They said this studio will be exclusively focused on creating a new narrative based and genre defined. Ooh, genre defined. Very bold word to use there. Genre defining AAA franchise. The Built from the Ground Up Elsewhere Entertainment is a premier and standalone studio dedicated to establishing an environment that inspires bold and diverse ideas. The team's underlying mission encourages everyone to explore and collaborate creatively, uh, creatively, sorry, creatively, <laughs> creatively to craft a franchise with an enduring legacy that resonates far beyond games. Uh, Activision said that the team at Elsewhere includes devs from games like Uncharted, ooh, that's uh, TBH's favorite game, <laughs> The Last of Us, The Witcher, Cyberpunk 2077, Far Cry, The Division, and Destiny. Not gonna lie, that's a that's a, a very impressive lineup of devs. Like that's that's a whole like mixing pot of different types of games. So I mean, with that being said, if you have developers that have worked on all these type of games, this studio might be cooking. We shall see. This studio might be cooking up something. So genre defining. I wonder what new genre could possibly like come out that you know will catch everybody's eye like be be super innovative so uh so with that being said man like if they're if they're you know uh saying that that you know they have these devs they're working on all these games it's gonna be genre defining triple a franchise then you know we shall see it may be cooking up something um no game was announced of course but they just announced studio that what was said is that the first game will be part of an all new franchise so new ip cool cool New studio has full access to Activision resources and tools as it continues to increase production and development. Elsewhere's opening is search for best in-class talent from across the industry and around the world to help create a set of the art next generation gaming. My only problem with this, and this goes back to, um, we spoke about this on the podcast, which should be coming out hopefully by the end of this week. But when we were talking about Xbox, when we were talking about Microsoft and them closing down studios apparently one of the rumors um heard from some insiders in microsoft was that microsoft did not know how to manage bethesda and activision those are two really big companies coming in uh you know they operated on their own and now they are under use now you are in charge of managing both of these huge studios but one of the things that some of the insiders uh said was that Microsoft was doing a bad job at managing Bethesda and Activision. So now Activision announces another studio on top of which I already had, which is really not much. I mean, you have the Blizzard part, but Activision is just really Call of Duty. <laughs> I know the Call of Duty is still huge and does require a lot of people when y'all have sub studios and you know, that make the games every year or every other year, but still like Activision, even though they're big, it's not like they're cooking up a whole bunch of ips you know a lot of their ip they unfortunately leave dormant so then they'll create a whole another studio is interesting and i hope that this doesn't end up being more of a detriment not only to activision but to microsoft because now you have another studio that you have to manage so that's the one thing that you know i'm being you know cautiously optimistic about but you know with what they're saying you know what they're touting i am excited to see what they can possibly come up with so that's the news. That's the news. 